Hey guys, Sol and Owen here in Philadelphia where good things happen too. Lots of good things. Well, I've been here in Philadelphia bulb planting for the previous two weeks and when I was reviewing the footage, all I could think about was that I was like a squirrel showing you, look at this dirt where I planted these, 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 and those. It turns out watching someone plant bulbs is just not that exciting. Uh, in fact, the only um, possible like cinematically dramatic moment I couldn't even get on film because I had a major allergic reaction to handling a bag of hyacinth bulbs. Um, there is a com component of bulbs called calcium oxalate that some people can find uh, as a skin irritant. It's not like a true allergic reaction, but it caused my entire face and particularly my ears to feel like they were on fire. So I had to run inside and scrub everything down dry off and then use cool compresses on my skin. It took about 20 minutes to go away. So um, fortunately I discovered I am not sensitive to any of the tulips, daffodils, or alliums that I planted, but those hyacinth bulbs really got me. And I have to say, um, I once stood in a field of hyacinth in Holland where they, th these bulbs begin. <laughs> the experience of having my face feel like it was on fire has really kind of altered <laughs> what that memory means to me. Uh, I, I, I can't say I'm really looking forward to those flowers right now because of how uncomfortable <laughs> that was. And the ear thing I couldn't understand except that, you know, I have long hair, I'm growing my bangs out, and I am constantly pushing my hair behind my ears. So I'm going to presume that that's how I got it all over my ears but very uncomfortable fortunately as long as you wash it off and don't scratch it in uh you know the discomfort was short-lived because there are tons of videos on how to plant bulbs and one of my favorite ones is by erin of the impatient gardener where she shows five ways that you can plant bulbs using different tools um, i have used all of those methods everywhere that i've planted has required different strategies for digging i've used hand shovels my trench shovel my auger and they all have advantages and disadvantages the hand shovel or narrow trenching shovel lets you get precise so if you're planting bulbs in densely planted areas that's a little bit easier i have very few areas that are densely planted um, I also have a heavy duty right angle auger drill, um, which is, a, is it's an expensive investment and I really, really struggled with whether or not to make that purchase in the spring, especially considering my work is shut down, but I'm so glad I did. It has made planting everything so much easier. And I've been able to lend it to friends who are working on their garden as well. Since I favor very natural drifts and swaths of planting, my favorite discovery in experimenting with all the different tools was taking the five inch auger by Power Planter on my medium duty drill. You can't use like a lightweight cordless drill, but you need some horsepower to be able to turn 
the heavier blade, but you don't need the heavy duty auger, but I like the five inch uh, auger on my regular heavy duty blade with a decent sized battery pack so it didn't wear out too fast. And I was able to kind of dig down to about six inches and then start dragging the auger through the soil to kind of create lines and organic kind of trenching. Um, the auger does throw a lot of soil around, so if, like me, you're trying to keep your good soil in the beds, you do have to practice a little to keep it from throwing it too far. And you can do that by finding the right combination of speed and power on your drill with the different settings. Um, but I find that based on the different soil conditions, you have to experiment with getting the right amount of turn without it going so crazy. And I highly recommend that you use the handle, a right angle handle on your drill, it helps keep you from being torqued if the drill catches on anything. Now, the heavy duty auger, if you decide to invest in it, has been like a lifesaver for me. We still have tons of tree roots and things. We did a pretty good job of grinding them down, but if I hit anything, it has an automatic clutch shut off and um, it doesn't jerk or it just automatically shuts off. So that one, while it's heavier and harder to use to like lug around for a woman with, you know, gardening strength, but I'm not a weightlifter by any stretch. Um, but that one I find is particularly helpful in areas where we had some of the bigger trees and I know that there's still some root systems down there. So I really worked on creating pockets of mixed bulbs. I ordered a combination of mixed tulip varieties just because I planted small amounts of them last year and liked them. And then I focused on some daffodils, alliums, hyacinths, and more tulip varieties that I really like just to see what I want to carry forward. I am daffodils naturalize really well. So Hopefully I'll love 85-90% of what I've planted and um, I have there's one that I'm not too sure about it's uh, like anything with flowers you can look at a million photos online but how it grows in your conditions it might not be the color if we're just meeting uh, you've never heard that I don't really love bright daffodil yellow <laughs> but if you've been watching the channel for a long time um, I feel like I say that every other video. So um, I tried not to plant any daffodils that had that true yellow except this one mini that might end up having truly yellow petals but others I've seen it's like a pale creamy butter color. So we'll see. So one of the main things I was worried about this year was squirrels. Last year I had planted my bulbs in containers and the squirrels were super aggressive and ate many of them, displaced them, uh, dug them up and threw them. Uh, I did plant a few tulip bulb bulbs in one of the beds and every day there were you know, squirrels uncovering them, eating them, ruining them. So I was prepared to battle the squirrels this year and so far I haven't had to worry too much about it. That may be because we got rid of most of the trees to do the renovations. And I guess as we put new trees back in, maybe the squirrels will return. But we do live surrounded by many beautiful giant trees, so maybe that's where they're hanging. If you have a squirrel problem, the three ways that I have found to mitigate their digging are uh, in a worst case scenario, if you find they're really digging a patch, you can kind of cover the area with chicken wire. You can use landscape staples to tack them down and then put some mulch over it. And that will keep them from digging specifically in that spot. Um, another is a critter repellent. I personally really like this one from Bonide. It has a cinnamon pepper smell to it, and uh, which I don't mind, but the squirrels really don't like and it's non-toxic and safe for we have some yard cats and neighbor cats that um, and our little neighbor dog taco sometimes runs over here so it's safe for them it just is a repellent a deterrent obviously like any powdered or granulated repellent if it rains it's not going to be as effective so you kind of have to keep on top of it and then the last and probably most simple um, i was planting a bunch of hellebores 
and um, noticing that the squirrels were digging. So what I did was took leaves and uh, leaf and pine straw mulch and kind of covered everywhere that I had been digging and kind of camouflaged it because I because I learned that how squirrels really hunt is looking for the places that the other squirrel buried her stuff. But if you have spent any time with me and watched how I did my seed starting testing last year for this, this year's planting, I try lots of things. Almost anything that I think might be remotely beautiful or interesting, I'm willing to try. So seeds are definitely a low cost investment. And I have to say, the bulbs when you're buying in larger quantities aren't a huge investment either. The most expensive things I got were some of the alliums. But um, I found that for if you want a lot of something, dutchgrown.com, none of these are sponsored. I bought all of these. And I bought them pre-Rona, which is why there's so many of them. Um, Dutch Grown, really great prices for 100 counts or more of items. Uh, Eden Brothers, uh, better pricing on the 50 to 100 range and Longfield Gardens found them to have some really beautiful alliums at reasonable prices. Um, I know some gardening YouTubers really love working with Longfield Gardens. It's, I, it's not, I, I just was tapped out. I had maxed out my bulb budget and uh, I could add, I could keep adding because uh, we're, we're the garden is way too messy for tours right now, but um, I am astounded at how much space I still have for planting. So as far as how long or what bulbs to plant, you can keep planting as long as you can dig the hole. Last year, I didn't get around to planting my bulbs until very late. I had kept them in our cool, rapidly cooling garage and got them planted in containers. I wanna say probably around the last week in November, first week of December. Um, so, you know, we, I still got beautiful show, at least of the ones that the squirrels left me. Uh, we're having a really gorgeous day today, so I am excited to get outside and continue working on cleaning this place up. Uh, let's just hope it, it looks worst before it gets, <laughs> before it all comes together because uh, it's pretty scary out here. But um, so you can take a look at the three websites that I mentioned. Uh, if you have a favorite bulb supplier, leave it as a comment below for other people. Uh, but Dutch Grown, why I picked them is that they're uh, local to Philadelphia and um, I found their prices to be incredibly reasonable and they had some really beautiful uh, spring bulbs in colors that I felt like worked with my taste. So. Uh, not sponsored, just encourage you to check them out. I found the pricing to be excellent for the quantity and the bulbs were gorgeous. Um, just really, really beautiful quality. That wraps up this video. I could keep showing you patches of dirt where I have allegedly planted bulbs, or we can just watch the squirrel dance more and wait until spring to see the actual bulb show. So I hope you guys are able to get to your gardens. I hope you are planting lots of things to look forward to for the spring. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And leave me a comment below with favorite bulb, favorite bulb supplier, or just one that you're excited to see for next spring. And I'll see you soon.